Welcome, everyone. It's another Friday, and I'm so glad to welcome you to our Friday Forum. As you're logging in and joining us, I would love to have you put in the chat your name and your location. And if you're in a separate location, like you're on vacation right now, go ahead and share that too, where you're normally at and where you are right now. My name is Cindy McDonald, and I am so honored and excited that I am able to host these Friday forums. I was on hiatus in June and now we're back in July and I'm so excited to have Gina Lester and Chris Bell join me today and also welcome back Carmen Gallegos. She is my right hand person that's going to help us in with our webinar today. So we're, this has just been such an exciting week. I think some, um, so somebody says the chat is disabled. I'm not sure, okay. Let's see what that is. Is that something you can work on, Carmen? Let's see if we can get, yeah, the, I'm not sure why it would be disabled. So we will try and get that enabled and be able to share more information with you. Um, I wanna thank everybody for the birthday greetings that I received yesterday was my birthday. And it was just, I worked all day, which was, was a pleasure. We all enjoy the work we do. And it was a double pleasure to be able to in interview Jeffrey Salingo for UCLA. So if you didn't catch that, let me know. You can send me an email at cindy at cindymcdonald.com and I'll send you a link. Um, it was such a pleasure to interview him and talk about his work in higher education and um, what the future might look like. So today we're going to talk about things from a business perspective. So this is a session that Gina and Chris and I did in at the HECA conference recently in Denver, and it had such a positive response. We got so much feedback from it. We wanted to bring it to the Friday Forum. So Gina, I'm so glad to have you here. Chris, I'm so glad to have you here. We're just really glad this is an opportunity to share. We have well over 100 people that have signed up for this. So let's, um, I'm going to go ahead. We've got a presentation for you while we figure out how to do the chat. Hopefully, you can um, Carrie put something in the QA. You should be able to put questions in the QA. And we will take questions at the end. So as they occur to you, please just stick them in the QA and we will refer to them at the end. How does that sound? Okay, all right, so let me, let me do the, takes a little bit to start the PowerPoint and let's go here and I'm going to, oh. all right, let's do share my screen. Um, There we go. All right, let's try this. We all love um, Zoom, but it doesn't make it easy to switch when you have a PowerPoint. All right, and you should be seeing my screen right now. Are you guys, Chris is sharing his head. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna do this. goes black and now it's back up. Okay, so Gina, I'm gonna turn this over to you and let you get us started. Sounds great, thank you, Cindy. Um, I always say that if you, if you don't have a tech issue, then you aren't really experiencing, you know, um, the real online world. So, you know, we are just prime examples of how to work through all of these things and to encourage you that you can too. So um, welcome to Friday Forum. I'm Dr. Gina Lester. Um, I'm just going to quickly introduce each of our panelists to you. And then I'm going to be turning it over to the amazing um, Chris Bell. So um, my name is Dr. Gina Lester. I'm a college admissions expert and um, online business maven. Um, I have been doing college admissions for 
um, 25 plus years and my background is both education, marketing, business mixed together. So I love helping IECs kind of move into that new space and we're excited to be sharing um, all of the amazing things that we have here. Um, then our next panelist, Miss Cindy, who you all know, um, she is uh, amazing. She has been helping us and she was my first mentor um, years ago. And so I'm very thankful that we have her and that she is that wonderful example um, for all of us inside of the IEC world and how to really run our businesses and move them into um, a place where we're able to scale whatever that looks like for you and to really do the thing that we're passionate about. I mean, obviously she has a long resume that you can read here. I'm not going to repeat all of that, but um, we just know all of the amazing things that she's done. So we're very thankful to be here today because of her. And then our first speaker, the wonderful, tremendous, amazing Mr. Chris Bell. Um, I was very, I very much um, felt honored and and um, to be able to speak with him at the HECA conference and to be able to do this again. Again, he has 25 years plus experience here in the IEC world. Um, he has a strong business background too. And he really loves to show you how to scale your business in a way that is authentic to you and helps you as a solar newer, be able to do that in a purposeful way. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Chris. And uh, again, if you have any questions, drop them in the chat. Um, just the next slide, we do have a free resource really quickly. I think it's on the next slide. If you want to copy this down, when you're done, you can go there and you can get a free resource list of all of our favorite books, podcasts, videos, all the things that we use in our business. And we wanted to just share that with you so you can get it there. And um, welcome, Mr. Chris Bell. Thank you. I'm happy to be part of this panel. I'm honored. Um, go ahead and hit the next slide, Cindy. And um, so when Gina and Cindy and I were talking about this session, we talked about, it's about kind of scaling your business, taking it to the next level. And it really sort of um, brought up something for me that I wanted to just share with you all. And that's like, uh, what does that mean? What does it mean to scale? Why, uh, why, why scale? How would you do it? So um, in a, I don't know, is our, is our chat working now? If it is, let me see, I'm gonna check. Looks like it's not. So let's do it via our Q and A. Um, Cindy, yeah, yeah Q and A, yeah. great. Mm -hmm. So yep. let me just ask folks, um, why are you an IEC? And I'll and I'll shout back some answers uh, that the group is is uh, sending in. So use the Q and A button and go ahead and just put in there why are you an IEC and what do you love doing about this? Um, and the the reason I'm asking this question is it's it's really the basis of why we do this work is uh, I think that if you can identify with uh, those reasons that you uh, that you started doing this, that can help you figure out how you want to scale. I'm seeing things um, like helping students. I love helping students connect with their futures. You softy you, that's perfect. Um, I love I, I love helping kids get to the next step. I love working with students. These are the things people are posting. I love a more thoughtful process spent with each student as opposed when as opposed to being a high school counselor, which probably is an, you know, an overwhelming. I never have had that role, but I know uh, high school counselors are tremendously busy and have a ton uh, a large number of students they're working with. I'm seeing things about um, uh, um, I love helping my students brainstorm essays. I love helping people a lot about. I love helping people would be the theme. I love, I believe every person should have access to higher ed and I want to help them. So those are the kinds of things we're hearing. And uh, thank you all for, for chiming in on that. I think um, the interesting thing about this is it's a whole bunch of people who love doing this work for, uh, for the reasons of connecting with students, helping students, et cetera. So moving on to the next slide, um, I wonder then is when you think about what is the next level for you, 
you know, what is success? How do you define success? And, um, you know, I think as a, as when you're early on here, I think success is probably keeping the lights on or maybe possibly knowing what the heck you're supposed to do with these students over a couple of years. But um, as you know, as you're, you're in it a bit, I think it's trying to figure out what, um, what matters to you and how do you get there? So let's go ahead and move to one, to the next slide. I haven't heard anyone here say that it's growth. Um, growth is uh, often when you think about success in business, it's like, wow, I'm going to have 30 people, I don't know, 10 people, five people, 100 people all working for me. And I have to say that's that's really kind of hardwired in my head too, as far as, ooh, it's going to be a successful company if I have a storefront in every city and uh, and that kind of stuff. I, um, I'm challenging that here. Um, unless you define that as your success, if, if, if that's why you got into this field, then maybe that's what you should be pursuing and defining as your next level. Um, but um, one of my favorite books of the past year is this book called A Company of One by a guy named Paul Jarvis. And one of his quotes is that most companies grow, and he's talking about growth in the way of more people, that sort of thing, for four reasons. And he referenced them as inflation, investors, churn, which is just employee churn, people coming and going, and ego. And so that one really sort of brought it home for me that uh, that I, I don't think that my next level is is growth. For me, actually, um, it's it's about time. And uh, and so in that next slide, I have a just a little reference of it's just a time thing. And that's how I define success. So I want to mention to you a few things that I've been pursuing in the role of time or efficiency. Um, I want to help a lot of students. I want to do it in an efficient and good way. Um, and so from that perspective, I've been thinking a lot about this um, ease of doing things, time, efficiency, ease. Um, and so, so how do I do it? Well, here's how I do it. I um, I think like a geek. So I'm making Cindy flip fast, but um, thinking like a geek, one of my previous, that's perfect, one of my previous um, jobs, I think a lot of IECs have had previous jobs. And uh, in mine, I used to uh, run a software company for about 10 years along the way. And in that area, um, I was surrounded by geeks, programmers, nerds, computer people, call them what you will, um, you know, they used to be the ones with glasses and tape in the middle and stuff. So you know what I'm talking about. And these people all have, have a way of thinking that I think um, is can be informative here. And so um, to the programmer, they think in systems and tools. The best programmers are lazy. They want to build it once and then reuse it forever. Um, they also want to get it out the door. And what I mean by that, if you think about writing software, they'll be they'll use the mantra of, well, just get it out the door. I dare say, sometimes they say that's good enough. Um, and the, the, and I think that's an important concept for our work is what's what's good enough. So um, when we when we're in this in this space, um, there are some um, things to think about. Uh, that's perfect. Uh, the best, newest way of doing this is called Agile. Um, Agile is just a way of software development. It can be used for other tools also. If you're going to look it up and learn more about it, do yourself a favor and don't go to the source and don't go to the high end, you know, learn how to be an agile programmer, read some articles about it instead. But I think you'll get enough from me right now. All right, so here's agile in a nutshell. Um, it's, you're going to do things, first you're gonna create something called the MVP. And that's the minimal viable product. And the concept of this is getting it out the door. What is the thing that I can do 
that's that's good enough to get it out the door and have that be out there. And when I think in this world of IEC dumb, it's like when when is it good enough? And then we work on improvement. And that improvement in the software world is um, is making the software better, meeting the customer's needs, that sort of stuff. Well, in the IC world, I think it's those things, meeting the customer's needs, and also you becoming more efficient, you being lazy and setting up systems that can be um, easily repeated in those types of things. And the, the way that people go about this in Agile is what they call sprints. And so they identify a period of time, a six-week sprint or a four-week sprint or sometimes even just a two-week sprint, and you identify the one thing or the set of a few things that you're going to address and you address those and you have a goal and you're going to get it done at that time and you're sort of focused on that and then and you and you don't get distracted while you're doing that work um you're working on that you're of course you're as an iec you're also meeting with clients and those things but as far as improvement you're just doing that you're not second guessing yourself you get to the end Take a step back, figure out what you're going to do next for your level of improvement, and then you do another sprint. And that's the concept in this space. I just wanted to share it with you as a way of sort of going about this. I think that um, what I wanted to do is sort of the beginning of this session is to talk about the philosophy of success. What does success mean to you? And uh, not necessarily deciding that success means being a fortune 500 company um, for you. So those are the, con and then I wanted to give you an application, the application being um, this kind of uh, computery way of doing things. So let me turn it over to Cindy and, and she'll get into the nuts and bolts. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. I want to come back to what you were saying again, because, you know, many of you know, I found, along with my husband, founded a technology company. And so, you know, having that agility, I think, is so key. And that's something we do as IECs a lot. And when you're looking at scaling your business, scaling your business doesn't mean you have to grow it, as you said. It can include scaling it in ways, as you've explained, of being able to create something that we can utilize over and over again, be more efficient and, and find that work-life balance. And so also I find working with a lot of consultants and Gina, you can chime in here too. Sometimes we wait. I mean, I've had people who waited two or three years to start their practice because they wanted to have everything perfect. And I have told one person and I, if she, she's on here, she'll know who she is. Like, <laughs> just get a client. Just get a client. You, you're not going to do it perfect um, until you actually get in there. And what you think is going to work may or may not work. So, so having this perspective of, you know, we're very much adverse to that MVP mentality. I've got to have every all everything lined out, but you don't because things will come up and things will get in the way, and and you'll listen to your students, your parents, the people you work with, and you'll create that opportunity and, you know, the, the approach that's going to work best for you. So, um, love it. What it, you know, so, so I totally agree and, and love that, that we're creating this foundation. So Gina, do you have any thoughts on, on that? Yeah, I was just kind of saying the same thing done and doing it and stepping out is better than perfect because um, the reality is it's never going to be perfect to us, no matter how much we go back and tweak and change and that type of thing. And you're going to evolve and grow over time. So, you know, as you step out, that's where you're going to realize, oh, these are the things I need to change or fix or adjust. And, and going back to what you were saying too, Chris, about the sprints or picking one or two things, <clears throat> you can't pick everything. It's, you know, it's that decision paralysis that if you try to cover and bite off too much at once, then you're going to just be overwhelmed and not get anything done. So that's another business building approach is, you know, pick one thing. And so that's what we're talking about today is some different ideas and things and then we'll be sharing some other opportunities for you. So, so let's see if I can 
So where do you start in scaling your business? You know, what does that look like for you? Is it keeping the same size? Is it adding more people? I see a lot of over the years, you know, I've worked with many, many businesses, both domestically and internationally. And this always becomes the question is I want to scale my business, but where do I start? So the first thing you need to do is find your focus. What is it that you need to do? Maybe you've got your classes are all full and you just need more time. Um, you know, you can't clone yourself. So maybe it's more on the client's journey. So you have three aspects to your business, no matter how big or how small you are. And these are the things that I've been working on and helping um, uh, consultants and business owners think about. Maybe you need to build and grow your business and add more clients. Well, that's the prospects journey. What does that look like? How does that work? And what can you do? And if you just focus on that, you can um, have that be what you're using for scaling your business. But maybe it's you've got enough clients, but you need to be more efficient. That's the client's journey. How do you onboard them? How do you make things more consistent? Gina's going to talk about group coaching. I found it very fascinating that this has become such a big thing. Um, it, I've been doing it from the very beginning. It never made any sense to me to do all these things one-on-one-on-one. -on -one -on -one. I've had students come in and do application labs from day one. And I know a lot of people would ask me, well, how can you do that? What about confidentiality? Never been an issue. So I'm excited to see that this is um, something that's becoming more mainstream and, and people are looking at it, embracing it. And Gina will help you with that considerably. Uh, consultant journey, you know, what is your own personal journey? And is and as Chris talked about, you know, are you keeping those things that you came in, you became an entrepreneur or an IEC or any other business that you have for that matter, are you keeping that? Studies have shown that oftentimes people, what the goals and things that they had when they started their business, they're not being able, they're not keeping those goals. They're not realizing those goals. So we want you to be able to do that too. So think about what your focus is. Is it building your prospects, making the current clients that you have better experience both for them and then also for you as your consultant journey. So that's the first thing you should do as you think about scaling your business. The next thing you can do is audit your current business journey. You know, look at where you're at and what you want to do. Use some data to drive your planning for the future. Uh, it's really important to have that. And we have so many tools and resources, a lot of technology. You know, we have several college planning tools, College Planner Pro, um, Council More, 360 Planner, Guided Path, um, and then other ones that are coming on the market. So full, pull in data and use that data to drive your planning for the future. How do you know where you're going to go if you don't know where you've been? So making that plan for growth is the first step. And then deciding, you know, as mentioned, where do you want to scale? Do you want more clients? Do you want to manage your current clients? Do you want to have more quality of life for you and your family? Um, that has become a really big goal of mine is helping to find that work-life balance. And then you can set goals or another term that's um, popular is rocks. So milestones, how do you know where you're at? And if you have a team, how do they know where you're at? And then, and then monitoring progress, having accountability buddies, somebody that you can turn to and say, here's what I want to do. What are, you know, what are your goals? And helping each other. You will achieve your goals 85% better, higher uh, success rate of achieving your goals with an accountability buddy. And that's why I use a lot of accountability partners within my work as a coach. And then, as I've already mentioned, keeping work-life balance in mind. Set your priorities in the beginning, just as Chris talked about. Why are you doing this? What do you want out of this? you know, that quality of life, working with students and families and helping them and guiding them, keep that, you have to hold to those priorities or we'll get sucked into all the other minutia. 
And I always tell people, I've done all this, been there, done that. Everything I'm telling you to do, I've done both forwards and backwards. So I know it's not easy to, to do. So one of the things that you can offer if you, I'm just, I'm going to switch over to the prospect journey. So if you're trying to build how many clients you have and add to your practice, you know, we're beyond, I was looking at a website today and, you know, and it says we're no longer in the 1980s. If you're just waiting for word of mouth, that is no longer enough. And for some people, word of mouth is fine and you, you build enough client base there. But if you really want to scale your business, some point you have to go beyond the word of mouth referrals. So one of the things you can do is offer a lead magnet. So I'm wondering in the chat, have you ever heard the term lead magnet? Or if you've heard another term that's similar to that, go ahead and put that in the chat. Do you know, and if you know what a lead magnet is, just define it in the chat. So let's see, okay. So, oh, and we've got Sylvia, I'm glad to see you on. She, she would definitely know what this is. And she does, um, she does a lot of this. Yeah, your funnel lead generators. Okay, so some people haven't heard of it. That doesn't surprise me at all. Um, so a lead magnet is where you offer something of value to the people who come to your website. If you do a newsletter or you have any kind of content, because we are huge content generators. You know, we write things, our industry is very, very content heavy. And so whatever, if you just say, here, I have this newsletter, sign up for my newsletter. How many people do you have coming to your website to sign up? Maybe a handful, not a lot. But if you offer something of value in exchange for that email, you're going to up the number of prospects that you have on your website. So that's what a lead magnet is. It's a way to start a relationship with someone and to let them know about what you offer. So they can be very effective for ICs. Um, and you can offer things like, I mean, there's, there's any number of things you can do. So here's just a list of some ideas, a free consultation, a checklist, um, how many of you have senior timelines or junior timelines, um, some kind of an audit, some kind of a list? Quizzes are real popular, and there's a whole technology based just on quizzes, newsletters, college data. I know people who offer that financial aid information, scholarship information. So think about the things that people are interested in that they ask you about all the time. You've already probably created content to address that issue. And so you can turn that into a lead magnet. So here's some examples of what lead magnets are from different websites. So for example, this is from Fine Educational Solutions. Complete a free at college application readiness audit. This is something that was already that, that was already available, had already been written and could be turned into a lead magnet. Um, this is from another, this is from College Match Point. You know, they have the free consultation. Some of you may be familiar with Lena Shaughnessy and she has, you know, get your free guide for finding the most generous colleges. She says, join my newsletter. And then this is one, this is also, and you'll hear from, um, this is from Lisa Marker Robbins and she will be doing a Friday forum with me in August. And so she has a quiz, is your teen ready for coaching? You know, and she does the flourish in its career and college. And this is from our colleague, Kathy Fine. And Kathy has done a fantastic job of working on um, her you know, materials and what she has to offer. So these are some examples of what a lead magnet might be. So they're, no, they're not um, obtrusive or anything. Gina has one, you know, get, click here to get your free copy of her book. I have some on my quest, you know, this 
doing my Friday forums or a type of um, lead magnets. This one is from College Essay Guy, free one hour guide to personal statement. And then Steve Antonoff, who all of us know has this um, lead magnets, you know, at, at request his information and you can add him to his list. So all of these are in that resource that Gina mentioned that we put together that Chris and Gina and I put together and they're in that resource. So we have them in a shared folder. So you can actually click and look at these websites. And this is why I'm gonna be doing a workshop on creating lead magnets. So I'll share that information with you at uh, when we get at the end. So the other thing that, as you're thinking about building your scale, and I mean, building your business, you can build your scale by outsourcing. One of the other mistakes that I see a lot of consultants make is they always, we always think about, okay, I need to hire another IC. And you may need to do that. But have you looked at other ways that you can outsource things first? Application support, supply, you know, supporting that client journey, SA coaches, application managers, break up the process. You can teach somebody how to review a common app, a coalition app, a UC app, Texas supply app, and then you're not having to spend all your time reviewing applications. So you can have application managers. Many of us have SA coaches. Make sure you have all the administrative support. Don't do your own bookkeeping. Please don't do your own bookkeeping. You know, that's something that most of us don't like doing. And it's much better to have that support. And it can it'll save you money. Getting a virtual assistant um, is also can be a great resource. It doesn't have to be full time. And that's the nice thing about doing virtual assistant. Um, you know, I have somebody that I've started and she's starting at 10 hours a week and, you know, I hope to increase that, but I'm very excited to be able to have that support technology calendar. If you're doing your own calendar, you've heard me talk about this, please don't, you know, get a calendar where people can sign up, um, email technology, college planning, all those things, your consultant's journey, you know, if you do, at that point where you filled in all these things and now you need someone else, you know, the discussion becomes as an independent contractor or an employee um, and, um, and extend your reach, you know, using online classes, crowd counseling, those are things, you know, kind of goes back to what Chris was saying, you know, create it, set it up, and then rinse, lather, repeat. So that's another thing that I know a lot of people are interested in. So we are going to turn the time over to Gina, and she's going to talk to you about that and how to think outside the boss. So Gina, take it away. Thank you. So um, absolutely, I agree with everything that Cindy said. Um, I am all about creating a business that um, allows you to be authentic, allows you to do the things that you need and want to do, and then yet yeah, gives you the balance in life to still do the things that you enjoy with your family and all of those other things while running a successful business. So, um, you know, I'm going to talk about thinking outside the box and kind of just, uh, you know, go from where Cindy was. We're going to talk about courses, group coaching, hybrid options, memberships. And I'm going to give you a lot of resources. And so um, you can go on to the next slide, slide Cindy. Um, I talk fast, so I'll try not to. Um, but let's talk about your why. Um, most of you guys have followed me, know me, those type of things. But um, I wanted to be able to have an online business that allows me to um, travel. Um, my husband and I live full time in an RV. We travel all over the USA. I'm in North South Dakota right now. Um, and I'm able to run my business. I'm able to be on, um, you know, like Friday, Friday forums and I'm able to meet with my students. I do all my group coaching, everything um, from wherever I'm at. And so that was for me a big reason that I wanted to transform my business. And like Chris said, everybody has a different why. Um, why do you want to grow, you know, where you're at, where you want to scale, why you want to scale, and what that's going to look like for you. Maybe you just need more time with your 
um, kids and your family. Maybe you just feel like you're at a point of like exploding because you have so many clients and you're just running around keeping, you know, meeting yourself coming and going. Or maybe it's that you're really trying to grow your business and you're thinking, what what can I do and how can I grow my business so that I have a full clientele? So we're going to jump into all of that now. Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to talk about in mine, I'm going to talk about all the online options. So Chris and Cindy kind of talked about other things. Um, I'm going to share with you about the online options. So um, one of the things that I have all of these things in my business, but one of the things that you can really consider doing, especially if you're really full or you're trying to bring in clients to begin with, um, to get to know you, to determine where they're at and to decide, do they need to have um, that more all-inclusive type college admissions um, program. So you can do this with courses. I teach people how to do courses all the time, but um, courses can be for parents or they can be for students. Um, and so for me, I have a lot of courses that are for parents because we have those parents that are really excited. They want to be involved in their kid's journey. They want to, you know, they're, um, you know, those, the ones that are very hands-on. And so how can we give them resources and still bring in income to our family? And there are those families that are going to do it themselves. They just are. They're going to do it themselves. And so I would rather give them resources so that they're learning and they have the things they need at their fingertips versus them out there just floundering around and trying to figure it out. And so these courses can be for parents or you can do more inclusive ones for students. Um, it's a perfect way to introduce yourself to a family. So maybe families are trying to decide who they're going to work with or what they want, or do they even need that, that, you know, is their child where they need a consultant and all of those things. So when they come into your world through a course, it's a low entry point dollar amount typically. And so it allows them to go, oh, yeah, I really do like him or her, and I really do want to work with them. And so that's an important piece to just keep in mind. It gives you access to, like I said, those families that are DIY and um, parents whose teens are not high flyers. I mean, we have some of those kids that maybe they're, you know, the parent is trying to determine, okay, my student isn't going to get into a lot of those colleges. So what are my options and how do I help my student? Or maybe they have learning differences and they don't know how to navigate that. Creating a course around those things, if that's your specialty, are all ways to bring in income to your, your business. It um, You're doing it once, it's done, and it's I, you know, you're going to have reoccurring revenue from that. So um, courses are a great way to do that. Then the next way is um, doing a hybrid course. So I do a lot of these where I um, will say, okay, so I'm going to create a course, but you're going to go through that course and we're going to meet once a week and I'm going to answer questions. So it gives that DIY parent like access to get questions answered, to feel more supported in what they're doing. But yet the teaching, that part of it is all done already. It's, you know, in the course room, they're going through it. And then they come back and they can ask you questions. You can do Q&As. Um, you can throw in, you know, maybe hot seats, as I call them, or um, where you're going to look over. Maybe they submit something um, for you to, you know, talk through with their student live. And they're okay doing that because if they're submitting for a hot seat, then they know everybody's going to hear their information. There's not a problem with um, privacy because they're, you know, accepting those terms. Um, and that's a great way. And you can charge more for those. Now, again, you're going to be there. So you're scheduling that into your practice time, but it's not taking lots of preparation. You're not going back and reading essays. You're not going back and doing all of that in-depth work. Again, it's the DIY with a little bit of you. Um, and so that's a great way to grow your practice. Then my uh, group coaching, this is my like favorite thing. I have huge group co coaching programs. I love group coaching. Um, I open up my program a few times a year and the students that are in my group coaching program actually come out 
more successful in some respects than even kids that are doing one-on-one. And the reason I think that is, is that they are taking ownership of their own program. So while it is um, very high touch, I do charge a higher amount. A lot of people think group coaching means lower, I'm going to charge less. Um, or I'm not going to make as much money. And that's really not true. Um, I've been able to raise my private rates because I personally want everybody in my group coaching. And when the kids come in there, there is a timeline, a system there. They are being held more accountable in some respects, because it's like if they were going to go to an English class and they knew their homework was done. And um, typically most of them are going to have that homework done. So they're coming in with that you know, that part completed, ready to go. I just opened up my group coaching program last month and did with IECs and walked through how to create a group coaching program. And it was just amazing to see all of the aha moments. I'm going to do that again, because I know a lot of people just weren't able to make those dates. But once you begin to wrap your mind around how to do a group coaching program, how to bring in the clients, how to um, grow that, you're going to find as a solopreneur that you can have so much freedom. And um, I'm like Chris in that I really want to be a solopreneur. I want to be able to be virtual. I want to be able to meet wherever I'm at. Um, I do have people like Cindy was saying that do help me, but I'm not bringing on additional consultants and a brick and mortar type um, business. Now, if that's what your model is, and that's what you want, I absolutely encourage you to, you know, go that route, because that is a model. And if that's what you want to do, then you can absolutely grow your business and scale your business that way. And um, some people want both. Some people want the, you know, um, online information as well as the, um, you know, have the brick and mortar and have both of that together. So if you're a business that's growing and you have multiple consultants, then group coaching still absolutely works and you can do it in a virtual or an in-person way. Um, but it does definitely transform your business. I tripled my business in one year and it is like amazing to me, like the freedom and the change that I've been able to experience and just the freedom that I have now in that side of my business that has allowed me to do the things that I want. So um, group coaching, I, you know, I promise you there are definitely, um, there's no issue with privacy. There's no issue with um, kids not getting the answers and the things that they need. And you can build this program out as complex or simplistic as you want. So definitely, if you haven't thought about it, it's one you should. Um, memberships. I also do memberships. A membership is where somebody comes in and they pay a monthly fee. And um, typically, you know, you can do this for specific types of groups. This is a great thing to do. I know um, one, of, one person I was coaching, they are now doing a membership for seventh and eighth graders because they have a grandchild that's in that age group. And so they had a lot of parents asking questions. And so, you know, a lot of times we have parents that are excited and they're, you know, ready and, and they're just like, oh, what can we be doing in seventh and eighth grade? And, you know, this is a great way for them to come into your world. They are meeting with you, whether it's, you know, however you set that up, it can be various, various different ways. I have a group that um, is called Purposeful Parents, and I meet with my parents that are in that group, and I, they're everywhere from ninth grade to seniors. I have seniors that just come in there, um, listen to the training, and they get to ask questions, and so they're definitely the do-it-yourself parent, but it's a great way for them to have some additional support and access to you. And it's reoccurring income. And if they're coming in as a seventh grader and they're paying for, you know, like this um, person that has started that group, they're going to pay a seventh and eighth graders and ninth graders and 10th graders. And then when they're ready to go into your group coaching program, they're already primed. They're ready to go. And um, they've already got a relationship with you. They're excited to be with you and they want to work with you. This is also great if you work with athletes or Maybe you work specifically with students with learning differences, or you have some real specialty area that you feel that you're strong in, you can create this parent group and give them that support. Um, and again, there I always look at this in that whether they're in a membership that they're just meeting with me once a month, or they're in a group 
coaching program that is comprehensive and they're on a, you know, meeting with me continually on a regular basis, all through application season, then you are still helping those students along that journey. Because so many times, if they weren't in my purposeful parent, they would be getting, you know, they would be taking advice from random, you know, posts on the internet. And we all know that that can lead down a road of total confusion and you know, cause them not to end up getting into the school if they want because they're not getting the right information. And um, so the idea is that I'm able to reach and touch more people, impact more students and do it in a way that's, you know, right for me and right for my business. Now, um, our next area, if you go ahead and turn the screen, Cindy. Yeah. Um, the last one is resources. So you can actually kind of like Cindy was talking about the lead magnet. Maybe you have some things that are more built out. Maybe you have a resume template or you have a guidebook or, you know, you've created some great software or you have curated items or worksheets that are specifically to you. You can actually put those and sell them on your website. Um, I can't tell you when I first started the online world um, and this always made me laugh, but a little bit, um, but I would be asked by hundreds of people how, what, how to format a college resume. And so, you know, there are people who that's what they want. They want to know how to you know, format something, they want to know how to go through and do something. And so when you're able to provide that and sell those things, and obviously those are low ticket items, depending on what you're doing. I mean, you know, you're not going to sell a, a resume template for a hundred dollars. I mean, that would, you know, not make sense, but you're bringing them into your world. So you can create, you know, like a sort of an online store, I guess is, a good way to explain what it might, you know, look like um, that has some of those things that you curated that you have really worked with that you're going to put out there that people can purchase and get into your world. So the whole idea in the online world is bringing them into your space, into your business, and they're getting to know you, like you, trust you, and want to work with you as you move through those um, other stages. Now, I know that everybody's like, okay, how do I reach my audience? Um, and, you know, you can go ahead to the next one, Cindy. Um, there are lots of ways to do this. And you, again, I'm going to go back to what Chris was saying at the beginning, and that you're going to want to pick one way to do this. Um, I am not a, I don't love social media, but social media is a major part of my business strategy. And it is the best way to reach people and a bigger audience in an online world. You know, you can still, you know, do all the things that we do. I still get tons of references word of mouth. And I will say this, once you bring people into your group coaching, I just signed up. I had three people sign up for my group coaching this week that all came through somebody who was in my group coaching last year that were in various places in the United States that said, hey, here's our group coaching program. My student did it. I loved it you know, head on over. So that word of mouth translates online. Um, there, I have had people that have come to me because somebody was on a parent um, talk list for, you know, like a neighborhood and somebody said, oh, you know, we're looking for a college consultant. And that person said, hey, check out Gina. And, you know, they're in another state from me. And I'm like, wow. And then I realized, oh, a parent posted my stuff on there. So you still are going to be able to get those word of mouths. You're still going to be able to build um, that type of thing working within your own communities. And I definitely will tell you when you go online, right now, people ask me this. I do see students all over the U.S. I did not start there. I started in my own area. And I would still say that 80% of my clients are in Texas, which is where I'm from. So, you know, just don't try to go out and hit the world because or the whole U.S. because then you're going to get frustrated and you need to really niche into your area and your people so that you can do that. But um, there's lots of strategies and that's a whole nother um, topic and <laughs> definitely will be, you know, try to jump into talking about social media and all those things more. But um, be present, be authentic, show up and um, pick one. You know, pick Facebook, pick pick Instagram, pick YouTube, 
but don't try to post on all of them because it will absolutely drive you crazy. So hopefully I hit all of that, helped you guys out. Um, just think about what your business goals are um, as you're moving forward and then pick a lane and stay in that lane. Um, that's the biggest thing. And then as you grow and get bigger, you'll be able to go into more lanes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Gina. And so, so this is a list of some of the different business resources. And with the link, um, takingitonline.com slash HECA at the bottom, you can go in and it'll give you um, this information. It'll give you links to all these different Facebook podcasts, YouTube. We have books. Uh, I mentioned one. Chris has mentioned the company of one. Um, so, and there will be more that you've used and found helpful too. And now we're going to, we have some time for questions. So I want to show this last slide. Um, we're so glad that you were here today and both we're going to be offering, um, Gina and I are going to start an all-stars coaching round table. It's setting up success in the application season. So if you're wanting to manage the season and have some gas in your tank when you're done, that's what we're going to be focusing on. It's called SAS uh, for short. And so that is taking it online.com all stars. I'm gonna do a workshop, a two hour workshop. As I said, I'm sure you have things that you can turn into a lead magnet. And you'll be surprised at what a transformation that can be if you're wanting to build your practice and add more prospects. Um, so there's a link to that class and that opportunity. Those are going to be in August. And then also Gina's going to be opening up her group coaching intensive, and that'll be coming in August as well. So lots of opportunities to really learn and grow and implement. And I want to go back to what you said, Chris, is just pick something, you know, have that sprint. And that's why, you know, we've found that doing these targeted workshops has been so helpful because then you're just focusing on one thing. You're not trying to build everything in your business. You're just trying to focus on things. So I'm going to, let's take them. Carmen, we have some questions. I know we have one from Michelle and this one is for Gina. So um, yes, what I just sent them in the chat to you guys. If not, I can read them off, whichever is easier. Yeah, no, go ahead and just read them off. Um, so we have one for Gina and it, is there any way for me to resell your DIY courses or hybrid courses? I really have no time to develop these courses. Yes. If um, you're interested in that, then just send me an email and we can talk about it. It's um, Gina at educationprepcenters.com. Okay. And, and I think, I think I'll put it in the chat. And I did try to put, I did put the uh, All Stars link in there, but if um, somebody, one of the panelists wants to put the one for the group coaching and the um, Cindy's lead magnet class in the chat, I think that would help because I know a lot of people are asking for those links again. <laughs> Okay, and then we also have, um, what do you teach parents in the course? Um, it, in the course, or because they want to, are you, are you talking about like a, a course? So I'm going to go with the course since you said a course. Um, so <laughs> I would pick a theme. So like if it's seventh and eighth graders, you know, like, are you doing a younger group? What would you, you know, what are the important things for them to know, like ninth and 10th grade? Like maybe you want to teach a ninth and 10th grade um, class. What are the important things that you want to know? Um, for a junior or senior, you know, I would take them through the application process, but I would be doing it in a way that's like, oh, you know, these are the steps to getting through. This is how you would choose your own college list, um, that type of thing. Um, again, you got to remember that you're not going to be going as deep as you would in a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Um, you're giving them information so that they can go out and, you know, then it's kind of up to them as to how, you know, and what they do with all of that information. So, you know, I think it depends if you're going to teach somebody about arts, then you're going to talk about the process of how to get through 
you know, applying with a portfolio or an audition or something to that effect. Okay, and then there's also pricing is so confusing. How do you determine how to price a monthly membership? Um, yeah, that's a whole nother course. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> you know, pricing for all of these things really all goes into um, how much time you're spending, what you're putting into it, and so forth. And so one of the things that I will say is that I feel like for many IECs, we under, there are a lot of IECs that underprice themselves. And I know Cindy will talk about that as well. Um, you know, we tend to look and see people who are really high priced. And so then we think, oh gosh, well, I could never, you know, go into those tens and $20,000 price packages. And most of those people are typically in very specific areas of the country. So for the most of us, we're going to be in the same kind of, I guess, price range. But at the same time, I see people that are, you know, if you really broke down the number of hours you spend one-on-one -on -one coaching, you would be, you're making $10 an hour. Um, and for your knowledge and all of those things, you really need to rethink that. And I know it's hard when you first start to think, oh, I want to price higher because you're trying to get clients. So you just end up taking on clients cheaper and then it ends up stressing you out. So even when you're creating a course or a membership or those things, you've got to remember you are an expert and they are paying you for your expert advice. And you're not just giving them fluff that they're not, I mean, I always tell everybody, whether it's a course, a membership, whatever, they should be able to come out and get a result. And they should be able to get a result that is you know, beneficial to them and to their student. So when you do that, then you're going to want to price that according to the value that you're putting into that. And Cindy, you and Chris may have more. I see y'all shaking your heads too. So you may have more you want to say about that. Go ahead, Chris. I learned everything I know about pricing from Cindy McDonald. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Go ahead, Cindy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, that's another workshop I'm going to do too, probably mm -hmm. after the application season. But I agree, yeah. you know, we often undervalue and undercharge because we're new or what all these things mm -hmm. and you can always charge more and you can add discounts, um, you know, mm -hmm. and then then your prices at this level and, you know, building that comfortableness. And we always ask the wrong questions in terms of what we're pricing. So yeah, I can do a whole a whole session on that. So I will the only yeah. thing I'll add is is just this this wonderful thing of um iteration and repeat and try it once and do it again. And so mm -hmm. um if you're charging too much, so they'll tell you. Yeah. 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 That is true. And I've had people tell me, you know, when they come to me for one on one or whatever that you know, maybe, maybe my pricing is higher than somebody else, but they question then why the other person's charging less. And then they feel like that person doesn't really know what they're doing. So they end up going with somebody who's higher priced because they feel like, well, there's a value. This person values what they're teaching. They obviously know what they're doing. Um, and then, you know, like I said, I'm not saying like make it this absorbent, you know, out of range type pricing, but I agree with Chris. I learned everything from Cindy. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely, and even in the courses, you know, I look at that. I look at what is the value? What is the outcome? You know, is it a smaller thing? Is it a bigger thing? Um, how much time am I going to spend? What access do they have to me? All of those things go into choosing the price. And then of course, the part of the country you live in too, it does affect that as well. And the clients that you're serving. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like I know some of you are serving international clients, so that might be a different price mm -hmm. point than, you know, like Texas clients or my clients in Central California. You know, I'm going to charge a different price for them versus, but I'm going to make it more efficient. You know, I, I've had Jamie Dickinson on our, um, on my show before too. She's from West Virginia. You know, she has 400 students. She has a very low price point, but she's done everything that you've talked about in terms of streamlining, onboarding, bringing in other people to maximize her time. So, you know, it, it really is all a matter of perspective. So mm -hmm. thank you both. Um, you, all of you, you have our emails. So if you have questions, 
um, please feel free to reach out to Chris, to Gina and myself. And in August, I'm going to do a back to school special. So we're going to do Friday forums every Friday in August. I'll have the schedule out here shortly. But August 5th, um, Eric um, and Lick is going to join me and we're going to talk about neurodiversity and the mental health in college, you know, a topic we're all very interested in. And we're going to have uh, Susan or Kim from the WOW Running Workshop. They're going to come in and do a session on the Y essay. As I mentioned, Lisa Marker Robbins is going to do a session on college and career and clarity. And I'm going to have Jenny Kent and Jeff Levy. We just have to nail down the date, but they're going to come and talk about their data and things. So lots of fun things in um, August and September. I have Carrie Pesson, Petzinger, and she's going to talk about discovering your genius. So lots mm -hmm. of things coming up. So set aside Fridays for this time to feed your soul and what you do, yeah. have the collaboration that we have. And I just love having you here. Chris, thank you today for today. Gina, thank you for today. You're welcome. Carmen, so glad to have you back. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you that- So don't glad know, to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so Carmen, turn your camera on here for a second. So tell everybody what you're doing this summer. So currently I'm interning at a civil engineering company called Four Creeks and they have a lot of different companies within and I'm part of the water department. Um, so it's super interesting because I get to help get clean, fresh water to people in where I live that maybe live on well water that is contaminated by nitrates. Wow. Yeah. And so she's, you know, you're off and you found this internship from your college in New York City. You were able to come back home and do this, right? Yep. Yeah, it's about 15 minutes from where I live. It's just like downtown. Um, so super awesome. My parents love that aspect of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone for being with us today. And I will see you back here in two weeks. Watch your emails. There will be a list, um, a recording of this. And I'll throw in the Jeffrey Salingo one too, in case you missed that. So everyone have a great weekend and I will see you soon. Gina, thank you again. Chris, thank you again. Awesome. Carmen, thank you. good to have you. Take care.